we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Oh, we've got the power in the name of Jesus. We will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Oh, we've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. The former and the latter rain together. I'm not talking about the weather. The Holy Ghost rain is falling down on me. I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. The former and the latter rain together, and I'm not talking about the weather. The Holy Ghost rain is falling down on me. I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. The former and the latter rain together. I'm not talking about the weather. The Holy Ghost rain is falling down on me. Oh, I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. The former and the latter rain together. I'm not talking about the weather. The Holy Ghost rain is falling down on me. I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. I feel the rain, I feel the rain, and it's falling down on me. The former and the latter rain together. I'm not talking about the weather. The Holy Ghost rain is falling down on me. Yes, the Holy Ghost rain is falling down on me. Find you a piece of paper. You'll need a piece of paper tonight. If you don't have a piece of paper, raise your hand and some of the greeters will find and bring you a piece. I got a pad right here. Yeah. Who wants to volunteer? Can't be the birthday boy. Nope. I hope you enjoy your birthday. Just go sit down and enjoy your birthday. Anybody needs a piece of paper, make sure you see. You'll need a piece of paper. I know I look like a trash guy walking in with the trash can tonight. Y'all wondering, what's he doing drinking his trash can in here? How many preachers does it take to open up a trash bag? <laughs> I look better like this. 
this. Yeah. yeah I, I'm sure I do, but I can't stay that way. Whew. Man. Satan needs some volunteers to be trashed tonight. Any takers? Mm. I'm glad y'all said no. I'm glad nobody's raised their hand and says, oh, I will. Tonight, we're going to be in several different scriptures. First, we'll be in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. And go ahead and find 1 Samuel chapter 15 as well. Wonder what this trash bag is for. Some of you probably already know, probably have heard this sermon before. It's been a long, long time. But tonight, we talked about separation, separating ourselves from people and things in our life. And, and we got separated from that. And we saw that when Noah was in the ark and Noah was <clears throat> separated from all the evil of the world and God, I mean, that, ain't that wonderful that God loves us enough that he's willing to separate us and to keep us in a distance from all that evil in our lives? But tonight, we got separated, but we're going to get rid of the garbage. We're going to get rid of the garbage. Get rid of the garbage. Well, I ain't got no garbage in my life. This is what we do through life is we tote our garbage bag and we carry it with us wherever we go. We carry it with us wherever we go. Father, tonight, I just want you to take this message, this word, dear Father, and I want it to minister. I want it to, dear Father, have such an impact and meaning in our life. Dear God, that we will really let it minister. And we love you. And amen. And amen. You know, as you, I want you to go back in time to when you was a, a young, like 13-year-old, 12, 13, 14-year-old. Some, some of you still act that way. Even though that you're 69 and 70 and 80, you still act like you're 13. But, you know, there was a lot of things. There was a lot of things a lot of different things growing up that you just hated to hear. You know, you hear that, go clean up your room, go wash the car, go pay the light bill. <laughs> but at age 12 and 13, they were some, I, I mean, they were some nasty, nasty words that my mom and daddy used. They talk filthy. Go, they would say, son, go take out the garbage. <laughs> Go take out the garbage. I did, and, and all just, how many just love to wake up in the morning time and go take out the garbage? Deborah Sue does? Yeah. My gracious. Well, maybe Deborah Sue, you need to do some training tonight. But they go take out the garbage. Those words, go take out the garbage. Go take out the garbage. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'll do it. And the next day, you're still saying, go take out the garbage. Go take out the garbage. But those words go take out the garbage. I want that to ring in your ears tonight and I want you to actually really and truly take out the garbage. Let's carry the garbage and get rid of it. You know, there's a TV show called The Hoarders. You ever seen that? I mean, they pack rat and they pack and they pack and they pack and they pack and they keep and they keep and they don't throw nothing away. If I throw, if I throw, if I throw this empty cereal box away, I know 10,000 years from now, I'm going to need it. <laughs> you know what? Some of those people is right here in this building tonight. We all are like that to a certain degree with some things in our life that we just don't want to get rid of. 
We just don't want to get rid of. There's something in our life that we just don't want to get rid of. We're going to hang on to it. There's things that, that Satan puts in our, in our life and, and we don't really and truly want to get rid of it. We hang on to it. We say, Lord, forgive me of it. And I want you to take it away. But, but then you keep it and you will not put it away. And tonight, we're going to take out the garbage because when we clean out our closet, how many of you just love to clean out your closet? Oh, no, you open up the closet door and then blam, and you're laying on the floor and everything's on top of you. I know how you are. I know how you are. You, you don't clean. How many of you would, and we talked about this one time before too, is, you know, if I went to, how many in this room tonight that if I went to your house and moved your refrigerator, <laughs> ah, you clean everywhere else. But you see those little hidden spots, those little spots that, that, that we don't really give a lot of attention to. I'm talking about in our lives. There's a lot of different little spots deep down inside of us that's hidden away that we don't like to go and get into. But I want you to just read tonight, starting in verse 28 of Matthew in chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28. When you're there, say amen. amen. All right, in chapter 11, starting in verse 28, if you don't mind, let's stand and let's honor God as we read this first of his word tonight. And he says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You may be seated. Take my yoke. It says that, starts out, that it says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. What burdens do we have in our life? What burdens do we have? What, what, what burdens do we that, we, that, that we really are burdened about? And, and we all have certain things. That, I mean, you can't help it, but they sometimes, just in life, throughout the day, somewhere or another, that there's something that just really burdens you. And on that paper tonight, I want you to go behind your refrigerator. I want you to go to that hall closet. I want you to go to your bedroom closet. I, I want you to go up under your bed. I, I want you to go in, the, in that in that guest room. I want you to go into that sewing room. I want you to go out into the garage. I, I want you to go into that into that, that that building that you got out there where you and you know when you open up the door you have to you got to push it all and and get, it takes about four or five to push the door. I want you to go in those spots tonight and I want you to write it down what it is that you need to get rid of because tonight we're going to get rid of some garbage. In any time during this service, any time that you want to come and throw your trash away, you don't wait till the end of the service. You come up here and you get rid of it. You write it on your piece of paper. And if you don't have a pen and you don't have nothing to write with, you just hold that piece of paper and you just talk to God. And it's like God just writing it on that piece of paper and you still come and throw it away because God, tonight we're getting rid of garbage because he says all those that's who weary and burden, all those things that's down in our life, all those things that keeps us in our, you know what, if there's something that's burdening you, it's stopping our relationship with God and this is a time and a season that we gotta, we gotta go deep, 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 deep with God. We can't have anything. We can't have anything. I want to talk to the Christians just a second. It says in Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. So when you, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, every, everything of that old, all the old thoughts, all the old ways, all, you know, I mean, I, I'm just being honest, uh, there's a lot of times that, that men, folks, that, that, that they come in and know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and, and they accept him, but then, but then out under the car seat or under the bed mattress, they, you still got that magazine that's got them women that don't wear a lot of clothes. And every once in a while, you might go pull it out. Or, or maybe, it's an, maybe it's an old phone number 
that you know if you make that call, but it ain't just gotta be about that. It can be an, it can be an addiction to anything and, and it could be that phone number. That, it, that I mean, you might have not had no addiction in a long, long, long time, but you still got that phone number. You know, we talked about taking our phone and deleting out all of those contacts that we know will not bring us positive news. Tonight, it's a time to get rid of the garbage because the old way is gone. The old thoughts is gone. The old ways is gone. Everything of the old is gone and the new has risen tonight and all those who are weary and burdened. But I want you to, I, I want you to find your way to 1 Samuel now because I want to, Samuel gives us a, a great indication about keeping garbage about those hoarders that, that keeps that garbage, that they have it there and, and they're just so afraid to get rid of it. And, and you know, I mean, they, it, they, 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 you just can't get rid of they, some things you just can't get rid of because women, ladies, look at your spouse and say, you're going to get rid of some garbage. But you're going to have to leave all the tools alone. <laughs> I mean, all those four or five lawnmowers that hadn't run in 20 years, they got to stay too now. I mean, we, we might need one of them. Ooh, y'all liking this, ain't it? Men, look to your spouse. Those 99 billion shoes that you got in that closet, I mean, you got one, you got two feet. <laughs> As we look, there's things that we just want to hang on to, that we just want to hang on to. We just don't want to get rid of because you never know when you need to pull a rabbit out of the hat. You never know when you need a little something and you know where to go find it. And you see, this is where Satan, Satan wants us to keep this in our thoughts. Satan wants us to keep this in our cross. Satan wants us to keep it because he knows that there's a time that whenever we get weak in our spirit and, and, and we get weak in our spirit, then we're going to pull that old rabbit out of the hat because we know that it gave us a good feeling before. And, and we know that it worked for us before and said, oh man, I just want that feeling again. But, but listen, as we go and, and we read in 1 Samuel chapter 15, Verses 7 through 11, and it says, Then Saul attacked the Amalekites. Now Samuel had went in and anointed Saul as king, and he was given a task. God had a task for Saul to do, and he said, Saul, I want you to go into the camp. I want you to go into the army. I want you to go into the village. I want you to go into the city. I want you to go in, into these people, the Amalekites, and I want you to wipe out every man, woman, and child, and beast, and animal. I want you, you know what, if it's breathing, it's got a heartbeat, I want you to zap it. I want you to take it and kill it. I don't want nothing left. I want it zapped away. Leave nothing standing except the trees. If it breathes, I want it dead. And it says, and then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from uh, Havai to Shur and near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag, uh, king of the Amalekites, alive. And all his people he did, totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fatted calves and the lambs, everything that was got, uh, good. These were unwilling to destroy these were, they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. The word of the Lord came to Samuel, I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. You see, God wanted... Saul to go and to totally wipe out. But Saul says, whoa, 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 you know what? Hey, man, I can bargain. I can, I got a bargain. I, I got me, I got, hey, I got the king. I can, I got him captured. And, and you know what? I, I, hey, I got a, I got a bargain here. I, I can bargain with somebody. I, I, you know, I got, hey, I, I, they'll put up ransom for him. Now somebody can pay me. 
And he saved those good sheep and goats and he saved the good camels and he saved all this good, the good animals there. And he, and, 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 but God, you got to go back and say, God, you know what? God said for me to destroy it. But, but Saul said, hey, whoa, this is some good stuff. There ain't no need me killing out everything. There's no need me getting rid of everything. There's no need me throwing everything into the trash can. I'll hold on to some of this stuff. And he, and he held on to it. But, but God got so mad because he held on to it. And destruction came into his life. And I'm telling you, church, is if we continue to hold on and we continue to take our trash bag and we continue, you know what? If you're not getting rid of the, rid of the stuff and, these, and the, the bad things in our life, if we're not getting rid of them, we're carrying our trash with us. And you know what? The longer you carry trash, take your garbage tonight when you get home. And you take that garbage bag and you put it in the back seat of your car and you ride around with it all week long. Ride around with it all week long. It's no different. It stinks, don't it? It gets a smelling, don't it? Well, it's no different than those little bitty sins. It's no different than those other little bitty things in mind in your life that we continue to carry around. You know what? We stink too. Because we continue to carry it. And sooner or later, you'll start smelling me. If I continue on to carry my trash, Miss Francis, you'll begin to smell me. And then sooner or later, I'll reveal all my garbage, all the things in my life, because I will not get rid of my trash. There was a reason. There was a reason that God wanted all of the Amalekites killed. There was a reason he did not want this, he did not want this evil to be carried to the next generation and to the next generation and to the next generation. He wanted that stopped. And let me tell you, the reason God wants you to get rid of it tonight is because if you don't get rid of it, Curly, you know what happens? We give it to that next generation. Those little bitty things in our life those little bitty sins, those little bitty things, that, that junk, that stinking stuff in our life, if we don't get rid of it, then we give it to that next generation. And you know what? That generation gives it to that next generation. Just like what God told us all, I want you to kill them all because I don't want nothing to live because I want a new people to come up that they will not be stinky. They will not have all this stuff in their life. I want you to do it. I, I want you to do it. But man, look here. This guy, he got, he's, he's valuable. He, he's valuable. He, hey, we can get a lot of money for him. You know, look at these sheep and goats. I mean, man, they'll be good on the kitchen table. They'll be good. They ain't nothing like uh, lamb chops. <laughs> man. But if you carry it, it gets stinking. You know, see, there was a, there was a story. This is a very short service ser sermon tonight because it's very to the point. But there's a story about a, about a man that, his neighbor, he, he wanted to buy his neighbor's house. The neighbor just didn't want to sell. But he would go to him every day and tell him, say, man, I want to buy your house. I love that house. I want to buy that house. Me and my family, we want to move into that house. I want to buy it. Every time you go to him, I don't want to sell it. I, I'm just not going to sell it. He would go every day, every day, every day. And finally the man says, I tell you what, we'll negotiate, we'll talk about it. So they sat down and they talked about it and they come up with a figure. The man says, all right, I'm going to sell you the house. He says, but there is a stipulation. He said, walked out on the porch. Out on the porch, he showed him the post right there. And he said, there's a, there's a nail that was drove halfway in on that post. He says, I'm going to sell you this house. He says, but I got all rights and I own that nail in that post. I said, hey, you know, big deal. That's all right. 
So later on, about a year later, the guy went back to the man. He says, you know what? He says, I want to buy the house back. All right, it's not for sale. Every day he would go to him, I want to buy the house back. I want to buy the house back. I want to buy the house back. Every day would be no, 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 no. So the man come up with a brilliant idea one day. He says, you know what? I still own the nail. I still own the nail. He goes, buys him a goat, cuts the goat's head off, puts it in a trash bag, walks over there to the house, hangs it up on the nail. Told the owner, he says, I'm hanging a sack on the nail. Don't mess with it. You remember? I own the nail. He left it there. And after about a week's time, it got to stinking so bad that the man and his family moved out. Moved out. All of that to be said. That's all that Satan wants to do in mind in your life. He leaves that nail. And he comes and he hangs a trash bag on mine and your life. And we're toting around nastiness, filthiness. We're toting around trash. Why can't I get rid of it? Why can't I get rid of it? Because Satan has got the nail. So if you want to get rid of it, pull the nail out and get rid of your trash you see you got to remove Satan we got to remove anything that Satan tries to put on mine in your life we got to remove these things that, that Satan keeps that nail and keeps it there because the longer that we leave it there the more that it's going to get to stinking and the devil would have it no other way for me and you to walk around nasty and filthy and trashy probably if y'all want to start coming as soon as y'all get here, go ahead and play. And as soon as they hear, you hear that music start playing, if you got trash that you want to get rid of, I want you to make your way, and I want you to get rid of trash tonight. I want you to get rid of trash tonight. We're going to get rid of the garbage. Here in 2015, we're not carrying any garbage with us. Here in the year 2015, we're going to say, hey, I'm getting rid of this stuff I am going to be as good as I can be. I want God to be 100% in my life. I'm going to get rid of the trash. I'm going to get rid of this aggravation. I'm going to get rid of these things. I'm not, I am not, I am not by any way going to carry around and be stinking, filthy, nasty in my life.